Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. Chances are in your game, you're going to need to use cameras and views. If your game gets larger than one room and you want to be able to move around, you must use cameras and views. Unfortunately, they are really complex and confusing when you're just starting out. Now they don't stay that way, so stick with me and I'm gonna explain how to create cameras and views both in the room and with code, and I'm gonna do it really quick. And just a quick note before we jump into the video, this month, by using the code THEBIG30, you can get 30% off of all of my courses over on my website at letslearnthistogether.com. I'm turning 30, so I figured I'd celebrate by giving all of you a discount. Again, that's the big 3 o for 30% off. And if you wanna see the awesome things that you can do with a custom camera and why you'd even want to make one with code instead of just sticking with the one you can easily make in the room, check out this card that has a playlist of all the cool things like split screen, zooming, panning, and more that you can do with custom cameras. So this project just has a character, a room that I've set up, and code that makes the character move around to my mouse and end the game when I press escape. That's all I've got. So in your game, you can follow along and add cameras just with what I'm doing. All right, what we have to do first is go into our room, and I'm gonna show you how to make it inside of the GUI, and then we're gonna translate that to code. So let's go down to viewports and cameras underneath the properties of your room. Now, if you can't find that for some reason, you can actually click on room and reset windows on current desktop, and it'll take everything back to how it originally is. And then you can pull these up, and here it is. So open up viewports and cameras, and then I'm gonna enable viewports. Now this tick doesn't look like it does anything, but without it, it will not work. So make sure that you have that. Then I'm gonna open up viewport zero and click visible. Doing that creates our first camera. Now you can see that this first camera is really large, except maybe our room is just really small because it's only 480 by 320, but that's okay. Cameras are also great at taking small things and making them large. So if you run your game without any cameras or viewports or anything, and this is what you're gonna get. It's gonna be something fairly small and probably not what you're looking for, especially if you have a room like with a village in it. You're not gonna wanna see the entire village at once. You wanna be able to see bits and pieces of it. So come down here, enable viewports, click visible and run it again. Now we're gonna have a camera that sees everything here and has increased the size of our window because those are two different properties that we're going to adjust. So you can see that there's a lot more we're seeing to our room that's just blackness that isn't actually there. So that's not ideal. So let's first come down here and change the camera size to 240 by 120. If you have a different size room, then change it to whatever makes sense to you. But for what we're doing, this camera size will function really well. Now we have this, we run it again, we're only gonna see that part of the room. And right now it doesn't move, but that's okay. We're seeing that part of the room and it looks pretty good. It, GameMaker will use the camera to blow up what you're seeing and make it into a larger screen. So that's how these low pixel games can be played on high def monitors and still look really great. So now we have the camera of the size we want. Next, we're gonna change the viewport properties. And this is the window your game runs in. So I'm gonna change mine to 1920 by 1080. And just by doing that, it's gonna blow up our window. So now it's a lot larger. I have a 1440p monitor, so it doesn't take up my entire screen. But if you don't, then it would take up your whole screen. Okay, now we've got those two things out of the way. What we wanna do is have our camera follow our player. So I'm gonna click on the object following, select it, and then run it one more time. Now the camera is actually gonna follow our player around. So if we move, we can now view and check out different portions of our level. This is great for also creating things like mini maps because you can have a camera, check out a different portion of your room and then display that back somewhere else. Just a little thing that you can do. So we have things like the border and the horizontal and vertical speed. Now the borders are when the camera moves. So 32 by 32 is about the size of our sprite so when our object actually reaches the edge of the camera, the camera will then start to move. If we made this a lot larger, say 320 by 320, and we ran this, then it's gonna move whenever we move essentially. So it's gonna move when we're 
not even that close to the edge of the screen. We also move really quick. So if we change this horizontal and vertical speed to a number that's not negative one, then we're actually gonna start moving at a much more reasonable speed. Negative one will snap the camera immediately to where it needs to be without uh, moving in a graceful way. This looks a lot nicer in my opinion. But that's how you make a camera just in the views. Now I wanna take this and put it into code. So I'm going to mark this as not visible and take off viewports. All right, now let's go into our workspace and I'm gonna create a new object. I'm gonna call this OBJ camera. Now, I like to use a separate object because there's a lot more logic that you can do in there that you might not wanna have in your player object or something else. So I'd recommend doing a camera object just to make sure you put that camera object in your room. Now I'm gonna add a create event. And in here, we're just gonna make the camera and then we're gonna manually set each of those properties that we did over here in the GUI. So we have functions or built-in properties for all of that. The first thing we do though is create our camera. I'm gonna create a local variable called myCam, set it equal to camera, create, and from here, you can create it with no property stored whatsoever, which allows you to then manually set all of them at a later point. But what right now I wanna do is actually create it with a view in mind. So this has a lot of properties that we can pass in, such as the X, Y, width, height, and then an entire array of things that we can do here. Now I'm gonna show you that you don't have to use all of them. We only have to use the first four. So I'm gonna make it at zero, zero, just because it's really easy to do that, and then we can move the camera later. The width of the camera is gonna be 240, the height will be 120. Then we're done, that's all we have to do. Everything else in here is optional. So now we have a camera. But just like when we were doing it in the GUI, we have to set a few more things, such as view visible, and the view visible is a built-in property which tells you when a view is visible or you can set it to visible or not visible. Now remember that there are eight different views. So we have viewport zero through seven. So we have eight all together and each one has a camera and each one has a view. So we want zero to be visible. So if you're not familiar with arrays, then you can also check out my channel. I've got a great video explaining how arrays work. And that's what this is, is a built-in array that holds all of the values of visible and view enabled, which we're also gonna have to set inside of this array. So we're gonna set both of these to true. So we need it to be visible, which is right here. And then enabled is this one right here. So it's like we're checking both of these boxes, but we're just doing it in code. And that's a lot of times what it is. So we've got those two done. Now we wanna actually set our camera. And this time we're gonna use a function instead of a built-in property. And we tell it which view we wanna do. And we're doing view zero for all of these. And then the camera is my cam. So we created it. We made sure everything is visible and we set the camera. If we run this now, it's gonna look like it did when we first started. Now we can't move because we haven't set any of those properties. So let's go ahead and do that with a few more functions. The way I like to do this is I do camera underscore set. And then from here, you can actually just look at all of the available functions you have. You can click on one and then open up the manual to read it, which is what I normally do when I'm learning something new. But for right now, I know what I want to set. I want to set the target. So the camera is my cam and I want it to follow OBJ Adam because that's our main object. Then I'm gonna set the speed. So set view speed. And again, it's be my cam and you give it a X and a Y speed. Now I always make these exactly the same, but you could definitely make them different and you would actually make them different if you're having a smooth follow which you can again check out in my channel. So I'm just gonna put a number five and five for each, which is all we need. And the last one is the camera set view border, my cam. And the border we'll do is 64 by 64. And that's everything we need to actually just make this work. 
So we run this now, the camera creates it inside of our game, and now we have a camera that follows our object around, and it's all done in code, and it's working exactly as you would expect. What's really cool is this camera create view function. If we take a closer look at it, we can see that a lot of these optional properties we could have set right here. So we have angle, which I would always just leave at its default, but then you have object X that you're following, or the object, and then X speed, Y speed, border Y, and border X. Like, those are all things that we set right here, which you could have set with just one function call, but I wanted to show you how to do this stuff as well. So remember, you can have up to eight different cameras in your game, really cool stuff, and now you know how to do it in code. If you have any questions, let me know. If you enjoyed this, leave a like, and as always, Keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.